some of you that went to Penn View have that Mr. George that you call Mr. George. But for me, he's Michael, and this is Mr. George. But first name, Elias, he'll probably be okay in this case. Um, so they had a chance to give us some ideas in chapel. Could one of my students tell Mr. George, this Mr. George, Elias, what was our conclusion about Israel West Bank? What did we think should happen today with Israel West Bank? Do you remember? Let me look through the picture. <laughs> Just uh, some ideas. What are some ideas you remember us saying should be happening today in Israel and West Bank? What should stop and what should start? Remember? Wasn't it that they should stop building houses and stuff? And so these students concluded, I had some influence, but tried not to have a lot. That Israel should stop building houses in the West Bank territory. Yeah. They call them settlements. Yeah. Right. Uh, there was, there was other I'm things. curious what led you, beside his <laughs> manipulation, manipulation <right? laughs> if someone, you or Ani, how did you get to that conclusion? Or what made you to make that conclusion? That was like our first simulation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I caution you. The reason I asked that question, because from my experience, we refer to race and religion a lot. Any little problem, racial problem. Uh, the evangelist or the evangelical support the Trump. And do you know the Trump? would be going to Israel and Saudi Arabia. And then in his way, he wants to meet the Pope. So you grow up in an atmosphere where race is a big thing, religion is a big thing, and of course, economy is a big thing. But in the last number of years, race and religion is overshadowing everything. So, if a Jewish guy came here, you could make that conclusion, you are anti-Semitic. Did you hear that term? <laughs> Not all Jews. There are Jews really are liberal, leftists. They want the government of Israel to stop everything, get out of there, you. Pull out and end the occupation. But, so, that's what I'm asking you. How did you arrive to that? Was Mr. King anti-Semitic when he put pressure on you? You know what anti-Semitic? Let's find out if your students know that. Term. I'm sure they do. Uh, do you mind if you tell me what anti-Semitism is? Semitic, it tells us that the Jewish belong to the Semitic race. I'm Semitic. The Arabs and the Jews are Semitic people. Uh, it goes back to biblical times, and they were from Semitic tribe. And uh, you can also characterize the Semitic people people that uh, maybe you say they are some of the first people that related to a god, one god. You know, in, in Arabic they call him Allah, in Hebrew Allahim. So, religion became the center of their community and they start building temples and this and that. So, when you, Mr. Bush, Bush yes. uh, said to keep Alec and talk to me a little bit, he spoke Arabic, the Jews speak Hebrew, but you hear people, if you go to a university and you study those languages, they say these are Semitic languages, because they are the language of the Arabs and the Jews. And then you add to the Hebrew and Arabic, you add Aram Aramaic. Did I say it? Aramaic, Syriac, 
even Ethiopian, Amhari, the people of Ethiopia speak Amhari, all of these languages have Semitic roots. What is a Semitic root of this language? I'll say this, then I stop. Every word in these languages has a root, root, R-O-O-T. And maybe 85%, 90% of the root is made up of three letters. Like, give me a word in English, then we'll translate it and we'll illustrate it here. Shalom. Go ahead. What did you say? Shalom. 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 That's a beautiful word. Shalom. Shalom. I'm going to write Shalom in Arabic, which is Salam. Oh, my goodness, I'm shaking. I'm not scared from you. But I'm almost 75 years old. That's young. And I'm getting shaky. <laughs> okay, let me take my time writing it. Okay. This word is salam, means peace. Now, if you want to write it, <coughs> shalom, that's in Hebrew. But it means also, they echo each other, salam, shalom. You hear that? Yeah. Okay. This word, it's coming because I know the language I taught, I teach it even. It's coming from these three letters. Seen, Lam, Me, Sa, La, Ma. From Salam, these three, you can make about 10 or a dozen words. Okay, one of them is Salam or Shalom. You can make the word Muslim. You know what Muslim means. Muslim is the one believe in God, in Arabic is Allah, and they believe a man by name Muhammad is a prophet that received, uh, what do we call receive? From God a true uh, revelation. angel revelation, a true, thank you, a true, a true uh, angel Gabriel. They call him Jubrahim. What's Muslim mean then? It's related to Salam. They give up everything and they submit to this Allah, to God. So Muslim means the one who submits to God. Okay? And we can just keep going. But they go to the three letter origin. From there you can make dozens of words. That makes the Arabic or the Semitic language very rich. Our language here in the United States, it's really a combination of uh, basically Latin and Greek. And sometimes, if, I don't know if your teacher in English class <coughs> teaches you the prefixes and the suffixes. You connect these words together, it becomes meaning. Can you give me an example? Help me. Michael, what? Give me an English word that has a prefix and suffix. Like exit. E-X. Uh -huh. You can say exit, you can say what? What other Exiting. words? Exiting. Huh? Exiting. Yeah. Express. Yes, present, and active. Exited. Uh-huh. Exiting. Exiting. Yeah. <laughs> Excited. Not same word. No, let's... Yeah, but how about the, the uh, could you do the same thing with the word like Jesus? What is Jesus in Arabic? Ah, uh, uh, Jesus or Yeshua. And what yeah. would be some other words that they would like? Al Messiah. Jesus Christ. Jesus. 